Hey guys, it's PC Paradise here, and uh, we're going to be starting a new series on the channel called Build Analysis, and basically I'm going to be going on to the wonderful website that is PC Part Picker, and we're going to look at a build, maybe two, probably just one, but um, we're going to look at a computer build on PC Part Picker, and I'm going to give my thoughts on, on it, uh, that'll be mostly part choices, um, uh, aesthetics, how it looks, um, other things, just throwing my opinion on these builds, and we'll see, you know, how, how this goes. <laughs> so let's start with the see all completed builds. Sim rig $157, that's not very interesting, let's start with something interesting. These are all really kind of garbage. That one, that one isn't too bad. Um, aha, 4K gaming build. Let's start off with something really high end. This costs almost 3,000 US dollars. Let's check it out. 4K gaming build by M. Frumpy. So, we'll start off by just looking at the description, mostly used for gaming and video slash photo editing. So, we're gonna look at the part choices for that particular kind of thing. So, we'll start off with the screenshots. These seem to be his two 1070s that he put in the computer and the SLI bridge in the middle right there where my mouse is. Um, yeah. Personally, I wouldn't have went with a, a SLI 1070 setup. I would have probably just started off with one 1080, overclocked it to as high as I can because it does offer pretty good uh, 4K performance on its own. And then in the future, come up with the money to SLI the 1080s and then overall have more performance. But this isn't too bad for like right now if you wanted all the performance right now. That isn't terrible, but... um. I don't really like the. I don't really like SLI that much. You usually, it's hit or miss depending on the game, and so I don't really like SLI for that reason. All right, on to the next screenshot. So this seems to be the entire build aesthetics. We'll go ahead and look at that. Personally, I think the build looks pretty clean, pretty nice. Um, I really like the li liquid cooler in there. It seems to fit very well with like the motherboard aesthetics and stuff like that. This looks really nice all around. Um, the black and red with a little bit of silvery gray in the middle. And the, the white is, isn't too bad. I don't... Eh, I'm not a big fan of the white fans. I would have probably went with black fans or uh, red fans for this entire build. Um, I do like these sleeved cables, the red cables, those go well with it, and the and the SLI bridge matches the graphics cards that are all MSI branded. So I think overall that's a pretty good that's a pretty good build aesthetically. Um, really hope there's a window on this case. I uh, guess we'll look in the part list later. We'll see if the case has a window. I'm sure it does. So, all right. So let's look at the part list. So for the CPU, we have an i7-7700K, which is a $350 processor. Um, if you're doing gaming and video and photo editing, if you do all of that, an i7 is definitely going to help with that, especially in rendering speeds, um, unless you're rendering with purely your GPU. But still, as far as encoding and stuff like that, I think that was a fairly good choice for the processor. The 6700K, if you were looking at something, uh, building a similar PC, the 6700K might be a little cheaper depending on where you're at, and it offers pretty much the same performance as the 7700K. So if you can find the 6700K and it's quite a bit cheaper, get that instead of the 7700K, and you'll get about the same performance. It's like a 3 FPS difference in game, I think. Alright, so the next part is the Corsair H100i liquid cooler. That's probably, actually that's a pretty good choice for cooler, um, I've heard great things about it, and if we look in the screenshot up here, it goes up along the top, and it looks nice with the build, that was a good choice. Um, oh god, I went to the wrong thing. So, I, I feel like that was a good choice for the build. Um, that'll give you some pretty good overclocking headroom, you won't really have to worry about thermals that much. Um, overall good choice, Corsair H100i pretty good so if you wanted to overclock high if you wanted to overclock 
processor to go to really really high limits then um, you would want to get a liquid cooler that's almost necessary if you're trying to do really high overclocking and so yeah under the next part so for the motherboard we have the MSI Z270 gaming which looks good with the build uh, it's a $200 motherboard close to it uh, it's the new Z270 uh, oh my god highlight the right way please it's the Intel Z270 uh, chipset which will it's like all the current features you can go up to 3800 megahertz DDR4 RAM which is crazy um, don't really worry if you're if you're looking at a motherboard and it doesn't have the high super high end frequencies for RAM that doesn't really matter RAM amount matters more than RAM speed like even DDR3 16 gigabytes of RAM is still gonna be overall better than 8 gigabytes of DDR4 so because currently I have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 and it runs everything perfectly fine RAM is the one of those things you don't really have to worry about you just have to worry about how much of it you have and that's about it for the most part so <coughs> so it's an ATX motherboard it looks really nice with the build and yeah I think that's a solid choice lets you overclock the i7 in it and yeah it's a good choice so for the RAM, here we go. That is, in my opinion, a little bit much. If it, I mean, for workstation stuff, that isn't terrible, but I feel like, you know, it's crazy how much um, DDR4 RAM is. Let's see, so that's DDR4, 3200 megahertz, uh, 32 gigabytes of it. Let's see how much 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory is. I didn't mean to bump my mic. So we'll go with the new egg. This is also Corsair. This is Corsair RAM, so it's similar. All right. So it's a hundred dollars, over a hundred dollars cheaper, and it's sixteen hundred megahertz. Um, it, it's crazy. That's like one of the reasons why I went with an older chipset motherboard was because I really didn't want to spend so much money on RAM. Uh, when I had, when I was focused on a pretty, uh, when I was on a, when I was on a pretty tight budget. So, personally, I feel like eh, that might be a little bit overkill for RAM. Um, if he's doing mostly gaming, this is definitely overkill, but I, if, I guess if it's mostly video editing and stuff, that might be helpful. But, still, I don't know. $200 for RAM is crazy. Alright, on to the next part. So, here's the SSD, the Samsung. 960 Pro M.2 SSD. This was probably a wise choice considering, even though it's ridiculously expensive, all these parts are. Um, that was probably a good choice for um, an SSD. Samsung makes very good SSDs, and the fact that it's M.2 makes it absurdly fast, and it's also 2 terabytes of storage. Well, the sticker says it, so that screenshot isn't accurate, but still, 512 gigabytes of M.2 storage is pretty good in my opinion. That was a that was a wise choice, I'd say. And then, speaking of storage, we have the Toshiba P300. Oh, there we go, P300, three terabyte hard drive, and um, that was probably just for generic storage and you know whatever. That was also a good choice. Three terabytes is quite a bit of storage. I have uh, I have a total of three terabytes of hard drive storage with a 120 gigabyte SSD and uh, it definitely comes in handy. I, you, I hit a terabyte of storage pretty quickly. So I got a two terabyte hard drive plugged in and stuff and that's like my video stuff. So if I bring up my file explorer, my SSD, if I go to this PC, my SSD is uh, about 120 gigs, my two terabyte drive and my one terabyte drive. So I almost use a terabyte in just straight up games. So, that's crazy. Um, three terabytes is, is good. If you're doing a mid-range build and you're planning on doing like e more eSporty games that aren't like nearly as big, or, or one terabyte will get you a lot of games. So, as a starting build, if you're doing budget or mid-range, one terabyte to start off is pretty good. That would be my minimum I recommend. If you do 500 gigabytes, you're usually entering territory that's kind of scary. And so, one terabyte is my minimum for uh, builds. So here's the, I guess, the meat of the entire build. Everyone is always like, 
what kind of graphics card you have, you know, that's kind of like the most important part in for gaming, anyway, so, uh, unsurprisingly, you know, we saw on the screenshot, SLI, MSI 1070s, um, I have one 1070, it's the EVGA for the win, and, uh, it's a beast of a GPU, like one of them is, and for 1080p, and I'm, I'm only doing 60 hertz, my monitor is overclocked to 70 hertz, but I guess so, 1080p, 70 hertz, it definitely does, just one of them, if you're looking at 1440p, um, 144 hertz then you'd need two or 1080 or you know something higher end like that or even sli 1080s um might be needed to hit that but if you're doing if you want a good build the 1050 ti 1060 1070 and 1080 are all really good graphics card and then there's also for the amd side the rx i would i don't really like the rx 460 that much Personally, I would recommend doing at least an RX 470, and then the 480 is also pretty solid. So, for graphics card choices, like this this year, 2016 and 2017 are very good years for graphics cards. Um, they seem to offer very good bang for the buck, like uh, 2014 did with the 970. The 970 is still a very good card today. Like, it still runs a lot of games, and it's going to be three years old pretty soon. Well, not pretty soon. In a couple months, it'll be three years old. It's about two and a half. And so, I feel like it is very good. On to the case, which is pretty important for aesthetics. All right. Wow, that's a very nice case. So I'm gonna assume that's all tempered glass. <coughs> uh, so yeah, there's a window and stuff. That looks very nice. That'll let you show off everything inside the computer. Overall, good choice of case. Expensive, to almost $200 for a case. That's on the more expensive side for cases. But, not bad. I, I It's probably very nice to work with and stuff like that. There's a nice little power supply cover, the, the power supply shroud, and you seem to got all your cables from out there, and yeah, pretty solid. Especially with the red uh, power supply cable extensions or sleeves or whatever. Um, that definitely, like, helped in the aesthetic department. Personally, I still have the um, ketchup and mustard power supply cables in my computer because... I have yet to buy blue um, power supply extenders, so I can have just all the blue cables show. That would be nice. Uh, future plan for the build or whatever. Uh, yeah, we have the 1200 watt power supply. That's about as high as you can get for power supply wattages. I think 1600 watt is the highest power supply you can get. But 80 plus platinum, super efficient. Of course, they're a great brand for power supply. $230 for a power supply, but um, I'm sure that was definitely worthwhile because that's a very good power supply and uh, it's got to support both of those 1070s, over overclocking that i7, a lot of RAM. It's got a lot to power. That computer probably draws quite a bit of power. Um, I think I can look at the details. Nope. We'll look at the details in a minute. And here's another little tiny gripe I have. Please do not pay $130 for Windows. You can pay like $80 for the non-pro version, and it, they're essentially the same thing. Um, that's just in my opinion. I think the pro version of Windows 10 is completely useless. Um, you can get the home version for $80 or $90 or something like that, and even cheaper if um, you look in the right spots. So that could have saved a little bit of money. I mean, granted, the build is the entire build is like almost three thousand dollars, so fifty dollars is kind of like nothing out of that three thousand dollars, but still save a little bit of money. And finally, the fans. Okay, I guess I was wrong about the fans, so they are red and not just white by default because they light up. Okay, that makes it much much better so when the, i assume when the pc's on these fans are red when they spin okay so if i can envision that yeah that that goes well with the build way more than white does and now we go to the details so he managed to get five gigahertz on his cpu overclock so the stock speed is 4.2 so that's almost that's 800 megahertz increase which is pretty good for a cpu usually that's what they're kind of like average expected so you might get a little bit higher um depending on if you up the voltage or not but that's still really good wow that clock rate is surprisingly low for the gpus um unless that's inaccurate 1.5 gigahertz is on the lower end for the um 
lower the GPU. Under load, my GPU hits like 2.15 or 2. Point something. It's like 2.1 at least. Um, it gets up there uh, with its boost clock and the fact that I've overclocked it. And then 8 gigahertz for the memory is standard. Um, I overclocked my memory. Overclocking memory usually doesn't have much of an effect on performance, but I did it anyways. So my effective memory clock rates around 9 gigahertz. So if that's the I, I doubt that core clock rate is accurate that's on the lower end for the card unless he just looked at it idle speeds um even still no that wouldn't even make any sense either because uh, idle they usually run at like 200 megahertz like real slow because there's nothing intense going on so that makes that makes no sense to me i don't see why that card would be 1.5 that's strangely in the middle unless they were playing a game that wasn't super that wasn't not, that wasn't intensive but not but also not super low end so it was kind of like in between like maybe battlefield 4 with some v-sync on like lock the frame rate and the card doesn't have to work as hard but under full load my card hits 2.1 gigahertz so Overall, and uh oh, forgot temperatures. CPU temperature while idle: 34 degrees Celsius and 55 degrees Celsius under load. Um, I think that's kind of what mine are on air, so that also doesn't make sense. Unless that's pretty average and I'm just stupid. Um, I can check my CPU temperature right now for idle. Well, it's being used moderately since I'm recording. It's at 30, 36 degrees Celsius right now while under some a little bit of load. It's under, uh, let's see, it's under 20% load and it's at 35 degrees Celsius. So I feel like those temperatures are might be a little off too. But all of this came to a grand total of $2,776. This is a build that's going to last years and years. But, uh... I feel like some minor things could have been done to make it just a little bit better, but uh, I would say overall it's a very, very good build. Uh, aesthetically, it looks really nice. I really like that. Um, now that the now that I know the fans go red, I feel like yeah, that makes it much better. Um, I, overall, yeah, it's a good build. So good job. Uh, I keep going to the wrong thing. Good job, and Frumpy, you. Uh, did not disappoint for the first episode. Okay, so editing me is always more accurate than recording me, and I was a little bit wrong when I was talking about the i7's temperatures. First of all, using my temperatures as a reference is a terrible idea considering I'm running on air cooling, a completely different CPU that is also not overclocked, and you know, just a lot of different things. Completely different. I probably shouldn't have made that as a point. Um, but for 34 degrees Celsius idle and 56 degrees under load, I believe that it's what it was. It was around there. Um, that's really good for liquid cooling, especially when it's overclocked to 5 gigahertz. That is extremely good. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, that's uh, completely normal. Completely normal temperatures for it being overclocked that high. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, the PC Part Picker build will be in the description. Maybe the guy will see it, and maybe you guys will like it. And maybe you want to send me PC Part Picker links or your own builds to submit. I, uh, yeah. If you want to, contact info's in the description. Thanks, guys. Bye bye.